How can you record better audio than this without spending a fortune? Stay tuned. So the first microphone we have right now is the microphone built in to the camera that I'm filming on. This is the Canon G7X. Really, really good camera, great quality video, but not the greatest built-in microphone. So you want to step that up. This camera doesn't have a mic in on the actual camera, so we're going to have to record off camera. So this is the first step that we've made to make the actual audio better than what we have built into the camera. It's going to take a little bit of syncing up in post-process, but this, as you can hear, is a hell of a lot better than what was in the camera. Granted, it's not the greatest, it's still a bit tinny, it doesn't have great range, but we've made one step already to make the audio better quality. This is the Spez clip-on microphone. I've reviewed it earlier. Uh, link in the description below where you can get it. This is less than a tenner and it's so much better than the inbuilt microphone. But we want to get better than that. And that is when we start getting serious about the audio. This is a USB condenser microphone. It's actually powered through the USB that's plugged into a laptop or PC. Now with this being a condenser mic, this is the most sensitive microphone we've had so far in this video. And with that in mind, I guess it's as good a time as any to explain why we're not in the cave. Because you see, when you're recording important audio, when you're concentrating on the quality of it, you want to be in the quietest room in your house or the quietest room you can find anywhere. Now up in my cave, I have my triple monitor set up with the desktop uh, PC. The tower and the fans are going crazy. I haven't got any cooling in there yet. So this video wouldn't really have made any sense when I was up there. Now, obviously I use this microphone up in the cave, but I wouldn't be able to illustrate just what I mean up there because the amount of ambient noise around me. I'm down in my living room at the moment. As you can see, my uh, soft boxes either side, they're reflecting in my wedding pictures. Sorry about that. But in this room, and I'm actually starting to get a little bit warm now, in this room, there's nothing that makes any noise. I've got the TV and everything turned off and even off at the power, so there's no kind of fan. Not that there is a fan and a TV anymore. What am I running, a CRT? But there's nothing ambient. In fact, the TV is quite old. It's it's relatively old and it's actually starting to cool down now, so it's there's a couple of clicks. Also, my cat Gino is right behind you and uh, he has a little bell on his collar and he keeps on licking himself and he keeps on ringing it. So if you hear a ringing bell, that's Gino as well. Hopefully I'll be able to get it all out in the edit. But as you can hear from me talking, this is a much better quality audio. Now, obviously always important is a pop filter. And of course, if you're doing serious audio, a pop filter is an absolute must. Just listen to the difference, okay? Peter Piper picked a pot of pickled peppers. I'm not even good at saying that normally. Exactly the same. Peter Piper picked a pot of pickled pe 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 peppers. <laughs> I know I kind of tripped over myself a little bit there and dragged it out, but actually it illustrated it even better than just seeing it once round because the pop filter uh, stops all those, the pops, the p, the t, the k. It cuts down the intensity and it makes it a much nicer and rounder sound. Let me just get the pop filter out of the way for the moment because there is one step further and it's this. You see, what this is picking up with the diaphragm in the front of the microphone is mainly here. However, there is also some collection in the back of the diaphragm where the audio can get into. Because this isn't enclosed and because there's no soundproofing on the ceiling or the walls around me, the sound will be bouncing all the way around me right now. Now the sound might be sheltered slightly because I've got a, a lighting softbox there and there, so that might be stopping a little bit of the sound, but in general the sound will be bouncing around all the way around me right now and it'll be coming back into the microphone. That's then providing acoustics for the microphone. If you're looking to capture high quality voiceover for a spoken word project, for a video or anything like that, you're going to need to try and cut down the acoustics even more. A pop filter doesn't do it. That just softens the intensity from you this way. You need to kind of stop it getting around the back. And I've got just the thing. This is an acoustic shield. Sorry, I've come back onto the uh, to the clip on microphone just just momentarily because I'm going to be moving with this round. And you don't want to be hearing that. By the way, if you haven't already, and it is kind of obvious, you're probably best listening to this video with headphones on. 
What this does is it dampens the sound going through the microphone so it can't come back on you. It also stops any other sound bouncing off any walls coming into the back. Now these are normally very expensive. You can pay upwards of two, three hundred pounds for just one of these. And all is effectively really is foam with a grill holding it in place. Well, that's what most of them are. Now this particular shield is the Nordal Reflection Filter and this is very different to any others on the market. It's adjustable. And what does that mean? So here is your condenser mic. It could be a USB condenser mic. It could be phantom powered, whichever fits in there nicely. But this floats. I just brought it up a little bit higher so you can see this actually moves around. Now here is the mic stand that I have. But on here, you can see that this part of the filter can go forward and back. So you can actually close right in to the microphone. If I lean it forward slightly, you can see it's right into the back. That way there's much less chance of reflection. However, it gets better. Here we are set up for a number of voices. One in the middle, one either side, maybe even two either side. It's wide enough to take that, just. What happens if it's just you? What happens if it's just you on your own right there? You don't want it this wide. This is the patented difference of the nodal reflection filter. You hold down a button that's right on the top there and squeeze it in. You virtually have a traveling recording booth right there. You've closed right round that microphone. You don't get that with most acoustic shields like this. Now, obviously I'm back on the USB condenser mic and you can already hear so much of a difference. There's a lot less acoustics getting into there. However, this isn't a really high ceiling, but it's a high enough ceiling. And I'm worried that some of the noise will be getting up there and bouncing around. Sound is a real pain when it comes to stuff like this. So let's just try this. I've now moved the filter so it's right up, right behind the USB mic. I'm now gonna close it in so you can really hear the difference. I've now got it closed in as much as I can with still keeping the pop filter. Obviously the pop filter is going into two of those grooves either side. And as you can hear, there's so much less acoustics. It's all over around me. I can still hear it as much as I did before, but the microphone isn't hearing it. And that's the most important thing. You're effectively closing off this microphone. As I said before, these are usually really expensive things to add to your arsenal. This one in particular, this one is less than 60 pounds on Amazon right now. It was sent to me by Mark at Dangleberry Music. Hey buddy, he's the co-owner, he's a guitarist. He's also, by his own admission, a regular bloke. Big shout out to him and yeah, you were right. It's not the easiest to record with this, but then again, this video is all about the audio. And as you can hear, it's so much better than the very, very beginning when we were on the actual built-in microphone of the camera that we're filming on. It's, it's, it's so much more professional it's nicer it's warmer it's richer it's so much better quality for just a tiny tiny little step you're not having to upgrade all your, your microphone or your software your editing or anything i wanted to record the audio in this video at least close to what you may have obviously the inbuilt microphone that's been untouched that's just in there put into post-process and it's just left as it is everything else is being recorded on a over four year old laptop. It's still running Windows 7. I'm not using any of these really, really expensive softwares to record this. I'm not using the Sound Booth or Adobe Audition or any of the others that I use. Right now I'm using Audacity. It's free to download. It's supported on both Mac and PC. Link in the description below where to get that. And there are so many tutorials all the way through YouTube showing you how to use it and how to get the best out of it. All this audio, I may have boosted it a little. I don't know yet until I get it back. Editing Adam, I've had boosted this and if I have how much buy thanks buddy and let's be fair the upgrade of a microphone is so much more than the less than 60 quid you get from this and it's free postage as well I've got to say compared to getting a another USB interface that has a noise gate or running a better program on your PC or laptop which will cost a fortune this is such an inexpensive way to step up your game when it comes to audio this is a no-brainer 
I gotta be honest, you're probably sick of my voice right now. I've had to talk so much to actually show off just what this can do. I've opened it up again now. Let's see if you can actually hear the difference in the actual microphone. I'm not covering it anymore. I've still got the pop filter on, but I hope you'll take from this that it doesn't really cost a fortune to step up your game when it comes to audio. A few savvy purchases in the right direction really, really helps out. Don't forget, Link in the description below for the nodal reflection filter. There isn't a better one in the market for this price. I couldn't believe how cheap this was. I really hope you found this video helpful, guys. If you have, give us a little like in the video. It really, really helps out the channel. Maybe consider subscribing if you haven't. I've got loads of other videos on the channel and more to come as well. Tech tips, reviews, all that kind of stuff. Tutorials as well. Come on over, be part of the community. Last but not least, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.